Hey everyone, welcome or welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name's Emily. I'm so happy you found my video. Today I'm going to be filming a 24 hour reading vlog. So I am doing this as a true 24 hour vlog. I'm gonna start, it's almost 5 p.m. I'm gonna start at five and then go to 5 p.m. the next day. And I have like 10 books picked out that are like aside from my normal TBR for the month that I'm going to let a spinner wheel pick which book I read next throughout this next 24 hours just because I don't wanna to have to make decisions. I gotta read a lot in the next 24 hours. So it is a mix of romance and thrillers because that's just the kind of mood I'm in right now. And that's, I think the easiest books to get through in a 24 hour readathon. So I'll quickly go through the options. The first is Natasha Preston's The Island. I have Riley Sager, The Only One Left and The Majesties by Tiffany Sow. So those are the thrillers that I have. I have more romances, obviously. Those are typically very quick reads for me. The first is How to End a Love Story by Yulin Kwong. Friendly Fire by Morgan James. Nothing But It All by Adriana Locke. Darling Bride by Ilsa Madden Mills. Those are all books from my romance reveal box. And then some non-romance reveal box books. Once Persuaded, Twice Shy by Melody Edwards. Check and Mate by Allie Hazelwood. And The Summer Will Be Different by Carly Fortune. For the most part, you can see them. So this is my 10 options and I'm gonna grab my phone to do the spinner wheel to pick the first one. So I just did the wheel of names. All 10 books are on there. So let's spin it. I'm gonna let you see first because I can't see what it says. Check in Me by Allie Hazelwood. That's exciting. So that'll be the first book I read. I'll remove that from the list. And then once that book is done, we will pick the next one. So I will be back when I'm ready to start very, very soon. And we'll start with Check and Mate by Allie Hazelwood. All right, so you know the drill. I'm gonna be trying to read as much as possible in the next 24 hours. So while I will be checking in, I will not be giving like very detailed thoughts and feelings about the books until the end of the vlog. I will go back and talk about all of the books, but I'll be checking in just so that you can see my progress throughout the next 24 hours. And it's just around five o'clock. So let's just get started now so I don't have to sit around for the next five minutes. Starting with Check and Mate by Allie Hazelwood. 24 hours on the timer, starting now. I've been reading for about two hours and I'm on page 174 of Check and Mate. Just a quick, so this is considered YA. It's basically about two rivals. You've got Mallory who like used to play chess a lot and then she gave it up and we don't really know why and then ends up getting back into it because of a situation her friends get her friend gets her into and there's things going on with her family and she needs money and she's offered this opportunity because she beat Nolan, who is the like best player in the world at this tournament, this charity tournament. So because of that, she's now playing chess for like a living to help her family, but she's still fighting the fact that she doesn't really wanna be playing it. And Nolan is just really fascinated by her and just like how she plays and her as a person and everything. So it's a lot of like, there's a lot of tension between the two of them. There's not a lot of, interaction between them that's not centered around chess. We just had like one scene that was. I'm enjoying this more than I thought I would. I was a little afraid to read this because I had heard mixed reviews about it, but I'm kind of flying through it and I'm not bored yet. I still have like half the book left, but it's enjoyable. I'm having a good time. So I'm gonna continue on. much exactly four hours in done with book one okay well like you just saw I'm pretty much exactly four hours in to this challenge and I just finished check and mate by Allie Hazelwood enjoyed this book so much I was so scared because of the mixed reviews I saw but I really enjoyed this book I loved their relationship I'll talk more on it later once this is done 
But now we can pick book number two. Once persuaded, twice shy. So that is, this will be my first Melody Edwards book. And it is a reimagining of persuasion. So I'm gonna get started on this and we'll see how far I can get. With 19 hours to go, we're gonna get started. left which means I've been reading for six hours yeah math and I'm at page 160 in once persuaded twice shy and this book is very like sad <laughs> um essentially about a woman who is like on the council of her small town and she also like runs the arts like the performing arts centers in this town in Canada and eight years ago broke up with this guy that she was like madly in love with because her family didn't approve of him because he didn't really have a plan with his life. He was a little too free spirited for them. Broke his heart and then his aunt and uncle come back to town to open a winery. He's now this like investments guy, very successful. And he's helping his aunt and uncle start, start their business at this winery. So he's working with her because there's going to be like a mutual project between them and it's just like them dealing with I don't know like he's moving on but she in right in front of her and it's just heartbreaking because you know how much she feels for him and I'm sure he has those same feelings but he's just being difficult and some of the stuff that's happening to her is very hard to read but I'm enjoying it it started off a little slow but I really like it now so we'll see I'm sure it's gonna get worse before it gets better Just over 16 hours left, which means I've been reading for just about eight hours. And I just finished Once Persuaded, Twice Shy. This was really cute. It was definitely like a very emotional read. It was not like a light fluffy romance. The, the couple definitely had a lot of things to deal with. It was a second chance romance from when they were in university to eight years later and dealing with like where they are at their lives and like the betrayal and everything of what happened back when they first broke up and her dealing with a lot of other personal things in her life. So yes, it was a romance, but it was also heavily focused on some other stuff too. So I did enjoy this. Um, I'm gonna go like take my contacts and stuff out and then we'll pick book number three. Okay, so I just changed a little, it's just before 1 a.m. Like I said, it's about 16 hours left on the clock now. And I just finished Once Persuaded Twice Shy, so that's book number two done. And I have to pick book three. I'm hoping for a thriller. I'm also changing rooms. I'm gonna go like sit in my bed for a little and I'm hoping I'm not making a mistake by doing that. But I don't feel too tired yet. I'm yawning, but I'm not super tired. So let's hope for a thriller that might keep me awake, but Spin for book three. Oh yes, The Majesties. Okay, so this is a nice short thriller too. I don't know anything about this, so y'all just gonna have to wait till I read a little bit, but I'm gonna go change up my scenery and hope that that doesn't make me fall asleep. Okay, so it is like just before two, it's quarter to two. So I have just over 15 hours left. I am gonna go to sleep for like, I'm gonna try to sleep for like two hours or so, just because I don't know that I'm absorbing this as well as I should be. But this is what I got so far. It's about two sisters, Gwendolyn and Estella. And essentially we start off with Gwendolyn describing this like event that happened where Estella basically poisoned their entire family and killed everybody but her and Gwendolyn's now in a coma so after that we go back in time to when they started I think planning the party that this poisoning happened at Gwendolyn is trying to like figure out what went wrong and where and why and 
why her sister did this and what and what she missed like I guess signs that she missed for her sister basically going off the deep end so it's a lot of like family dynamics and stuff and I think I, I would absorb a lot more if I had a little bit of sleep I'm not super tired but I can feel myself getting there so I think I'm just gonna try to sleep for like two hours take a nap get back up finish this um and then there, she's also talking about like her family businesses so like they're a wealthy family this takes place in like indonesia and she has her own company that from what i understand i think makes like accessories out of insects and bugs and stuff like that which would make sense because it's a butterfly on the front and i think they're referring to butterflies as the majesties but then they have a different word they use for insects and then there was another critter that they used i can't remember what it is but that's what it seems like her company makes which is kind of bizarre i'm not sure if that's gonna come i'm assuming that's gonna be part of the big part of the book just because the book's called the majesties but we'll see it's definitely different it's a little dry right now so i'm hoping with a little bit of sleep it won't be so bad and i probably should not have come to bed so after i sleep for a little bit i'm going back out to a chair to sit upright but i will see you all in a few hours for me for you guys it'll be like a few seconds so i slept for about two hours and then i got up and i read another like 30 pages and i'm still really tired so i think i'm gonna sleep a little bit more because i can't keep my eyes open that's fine this is supposed to be realistic so i'm about a third of the way through the majesties and we're still just learning about the events leading up to this tragic event we're seeing some things but Nothing that sticks out again. I could be missing something because I'm like half asleep. This probably isn't the best book for me to be reading at this part of the evening, morning challenge because I am tired and it is a little bit slower. I'm just gonna, I wanna read it so I'm gonna get it done. And this is the best time to do it when I'm like forcing myself to sit and read. So I'm gonna go try to sleep for a few more hours. It is, We've got 12 hours and 15 minutes left on the clock, so when I come back, maybe we'll have like 10 hours left, which should give me enough time to like finish this, and we'll see, because we'll see what next what the next book is, but it should definitely give me enough time to get through that. So, I'll touch base after I'm like actually awake, after I get some more sleep. Okay, so still not even really halfway through this book. It is dragging and not really much is happening. It doesn't really feel like a thriller. It just feels like I'm reading about people's lives. I'm hoping eventually it picks up, but it's not that long, even though it's dragging. I'm just gonna finish it. And I did find it on Kindle Unlimited, so I am reading it on my Kindle, which hopefully will make it go faster. We've got about 10 hours left on the clock. I'm hoping I can finish this in the next two hours. It gives me eight hours to maybe get through two more books. We'll see what books get chosen. I don't know. But that's where I am. I'll probably not check back in again until I'm done with this one. Okay, so I just finished The Majesties. Took me again about four hours to read this book. Um, not my favorite. It reminded me a lot of Counterfeit. I can't remember who wrote that book. But the feeling was very much the same. You kind of knew it was gonna happen the whole time. It wasn't really a thriller in my opinion. It was just like rich people problems that you kind of knew exactly where the book was going the whole time. I mean, it starts off with telling you what happens and then you're just going back in time and listening to their story and figuring out what it is. But it's very obvious, I think, the entire time where it's going. So not really my favorite book, but it's done. And now we're going to pick book four. I don't know if I want a thriller or if I want a friendly fire. Okay, so this one's an older one, so that's good. Get this off my, and it's pretty short. TBR, I don't know much about this. It's out of the romance reveal box. It's probably a small town. It says, in love with the best friend. She can never know. He's wanted her since the moment they met. She wasn't ready for relationships. He waited patiently, biding his time. Two years, they've been best friends. They do everything together except one thing I really want from her. Unfortunately, someone else has Claire in their sights too. The incident starts small and misplaced. So it looks like there's gonna be a little bit of a mystery here because it looks like someone's like threatening her and he's gonna play hero. So should be a nice little quick palette cleanser after reading something that was kind of darker, but I have about eight hours left. So we'll see how long it takes me to get through this one. I don't 
know what time I started this book, but it's been a while. I'm over halfway through this book. It's moving pretty fast. It's friends to lovers, but like not, they've just been friends for like two years. She moved to town. He was instantly attracted to her kind of thing. Asked her on a date and she turned him down. They've just been like really good friends for two years. And then it kind of starts the beginning with him being like, I want to tell her how I feel. I don't want to like be friends anymore. And there's an underlying story of she's being stalked by someone and she thinks she knows who it is, but I don't know if it is that person or not. And then there's, he's a cop. He's the sheriff of the town. So there's also this other crime story of like women being assaulted going on in the background that he's trying to solve. I don't know if they're related, but it's more of like a crime story. That's the interesting part of it because the relationship just came like quick. So it's a quick pace book. I don't think it's going to take me very long to finish this. So I will check back in probably when I'm done. Four done and we have five hours and 41 minutes left so I guess we're going to pick another book so I just finished Friendly Fire by Morgan James. It was a good book. Um, just a typical, like, quick, small town, pretty spicy romance read. Uh, nothing crazy spice-wise, there was just a lot of it. And there was that underlying story, which I'm kind of ticked about because the one that dealt with Claire, who's our main female lead, was solved. But there's, I guess, an under... This is part of a series. I never buy the rest of the series, really, that come in my romance reveal boxes, but... The underlying crime story that Grayson was dealing with didn't get solved. So that's annoying. But I don't know that I know who the person would be anyway. They may not have even really been introduced yet. I don't know. But that one's done. So we're going to pick book number five. This may be our last book depending on how long it takes. We'll just see. The Island, another thriller. I'm excited, this is my first Natasha Preston. She's a YA thriller author and she has quite a few books. I think I got this, I don't know where I bought this, but I got it recently, so I'm excited. It's about like a bunch of influencers going to this event on this like theme park, real like fancy island and then realizing once they're there that they can't get off. That's the gist of what I got. So start this and I'll check back in once I've made some progress. I stopped my thing for a minute, but I didn't. So we have five and a half hours left and I'm gonna be starting the island. Just about four hours left and I'm just over halfway through the island. And it is basically like what I said. There's, I wanna say, there were six influencers that were chosen to go to this island to kind of hype it up and everything before it opens. And it's this like spooky amusement park that's gothic themed and run by this billionaire who was on the island and then his assistant and a few of the park employees. And then like after the first night there, somebody goes missing and then another person goes missing and they, think there's a murderer on the island and the boat that they came over on is gone so they're stuck and they're just trying to figure out what's happening to everybody and who they can trust and I have no idea who it's going to come down to I'm kind of confused at this point about where I think it's going to land but it's interesting it's not like the best thriller I've read you can definitely tell it's YA but still still pretty enjoyable so gonna continue obviously and then check back in when I'm done so I don't know if all of her books end like this one just did. I don't, I have no words. That just pissed me off so bad. Unreal. Unreal. 
I'm so pissed off right now. Okay, this one's done. I have two and a half hours left. Two hours and 35 minutes left, so we will pick one more book, but I probably won't finish it. Stay tuned. I don't think I've ever been more angry at the end of a thriller book since Ashley Flowers. All good people here. Like, if you know, you know. So just a warning. Anyway, time to pick the final book that I will be at least starting in this vlog. I do not think I will be finishing it. Oh, my wheel of names is gone. There we go. I don't know which one I wanna read. I do know which one I wanna read. I'm probably not gonna get it. Nope, but that's fine. We'll start this one. My Darling Bride, I think this is like a NFL player. Yeah, he's a, well, he's a football player. And this girl like steals his car when she's trying to get away from somebody. And in order to like pay him back, he makes her get, it's like a, mar a like marriage of convenience so that he can get his family inheritance. That's what the back says. So we'll see. This was my most recent romance reveal box. I was really hoping to get This Summer Will Be Different by Carly Fortune because I do really want to read that this summer. But I still have like a month and a half left of summer to read it. So I'm going to start this. Two and a half hours left. So let's see how far I get on My Darling Bride. The timer just went off. So I'm about a little over 50% of the way through this book. So once I'm done with that, I will close out the vlog. But I read through like five and a half books total in this vlog. Okay, time to close out this 24 hour vlog. This is obviously the next day because I was not doing this yesterday, but Starting off with the first book I read, which was Check and Mate by Allie Hazelwood. I loved this book. I know there's a lot of like, some people hated it, some people couldn't even finish it. I thought this book was absolutely adorable. It follows Mallory and Nolan. And Mallory was like a chess player and then stopped playing because of some things that happened with her dad. And Nolan is like the best chess player in the world. And she ends up like accidentally beating him at a charity competition. And from then on, he's just like obsessed with her. He's just, I need to know who this girl is. I wanna play her. And I think that part of why I liked this book so much is because I find it very attractive when you have something that you connect with another person on such a deep level that like, that's your life. And I don't know if it's not necessarily like an obsession, but if you have a lot of common likeness in a relationship, I think that helps and they flirted through their chest. And I think that's what was funny about it. And the fact that he was like so close off and she was even so closed off and they just like grew together. I thought this was really sweet. 4.25 stars, loved this book. Then I read Once Persuaded, Twice Shy by Melody Edwards. This is my first Melody Edwards book. I really did enjoy this. It definitely was frustrating at times. I have never read Persuasion, which is, this is a modern reimagining of that. So I don't know if it's the same kind of vibe, but this follows Anne and Ben, and it's this like Niagara on the Lake town that Anne grew up in and her family's like well known there and high to do. And she started dating this guy she met at college, Ben, back in the day, and her parents did not approve of them. Mainly her mother did not approve of him. So she ends up breaking it off with him even though they were like madly in love, perfect for each other, because she didn't think that he had a vision for himself for the future. So they break it off. Eight years later, she's still in this town. She runs like the cultural plays and stuff, I would call it. So we call it like the cultural district in our city. I think a lot of them do. But basically like where the plays happen and where like musicals and stuff happen. She runs all of that. And they want to build this like outdoor theater on this winery that her family used to own. But then Ben's aunt and uncle come back to town and buy that. And he's helping her. He's helping his aunt and uncle with his purchase and like an acclimating to the town and everything. So they end up having to work together so that he, she can buy part of that land off of Ben's aunt and uncle to put this like thing in. And basically they're both fighting their old feelings for each other the whole time. And, there, and there was a lot of miscommunication because I think if they had just talked, there was a lot of pain and hurt from the past, which probably stopped them from talking. But it's, it had to have, there had to have been some type of angst. So that's what the angst was in this was just that he, he tried to make himself good enough for her and his life 
and then coming back to town and not knowing where they stand with each other was just that was the angsty part of this. I ended up giving this a 375. I really did enjoy this. There were parts that like absolutely ripped my heart out and I was so angry at, but I think that was part of the book. Then I read The Majesties by Tiffany Sal. Did not really enjoy this book that much. It was supposed to be a thriller, but right off the bat they tell you what happens, which I think is actually in the front. Basically this mass murder that occurs in this family at a birthday party and Gwendolyn is the only person that survives it and you're in her brain the entire time because she's in a coma from it. And she's going back in time to figure out what led her sister Estella to make this decision to kill everybody in their family, including herself, and then obviously trying to kill her sister. So you know what happens at the beginning of the book. And it tells you what happens in the flap. But from then on, it's not really a thriller. It's more just like a contemporary fiction kind of book. You're just following their lives and figuring out what set her over the edge. But it, it's pretty apparent really early on what set her over the edge. So it wasn't really that exciting. It was a little difficult to get through. It was very dry at times. I ended up giving this two and a half stars. Then I read Friendly Fire by Morgan James. This follows Claire and Grayson. Grayson is a cop. Is he the sheriff? He might be the sheriff of this town. And Claire is a teacher or a guidance counselor. Claire is a guidance counselor at the local like high school. And they were basically best friends. She came to town two years ago. He hit on her right away at a party and she kind of turned him down. But then immediately was like, I want her in my life. We're going to be best friends. So they are best friends. They basically act like they're dating, even though they're not. And then there's like this underlying story of somebody stalking her. And there's also this like underlying murder mystery of like this serial killer in the town. Unfortunately, the serial killer part of things was not solved in this book. So I still, I'm probably not going to continue the series because this was a book I just got in the romance reveal box. But that is frustrating. The stalker situation was basically like all of this stuff is driving them together and making them like, communicate more and more because she, he's trying to help her with the stalker situation. And we all know what happens. It's friends to lovers. So this was good. It wasn't the best read. It was pretty spicy once like things took off, but I gave this a three star. This one is hard for me to talk about. I read The Island by Natasha Preston. This is about six influencers that are asked to come onto this island, which is an amusement park resort kind of thing, but it's like a gothic, scary resort to get it like hyped up before it's going to open. And right away, first night, somebody goes missing. So then they're trying to figure out where this guy is and then more and more people go missing and then they realize they're on this island with a murderer. That's basically the premise of the book and then they're just trying to survive. Obviously like they're on an island so there's no way off except like a boat and the boat gets sunk. So they're stuck. And that's the whole premise of the book is them trying to stay alive, figure out who the murderer is, all of that. And this book ended off. It didn't really end. I, oh, I am so frustrated. Like I hate when a thriller, a thriller author is just like, I'm going to throw in one last sentence just to pick, just to piss everybody off. And Ashley Flowers did that in her book, um, All Good People Here. You don't really know how it ends. The ending of this book, the twist and everything was phenomenal. The last line of the book made me so angry, I almost chucked this book across the room. So take with that what you will. I still gave it three and a half stars because it was a good story. It moved a little slow at times, but it was like pretty much heart pounding. Like there was a lot of action and the twist at the end was really good. Then I started, but did not finish in the 24 hours, My Darling Bride by Isla Madden Mills, which was another romance reveal box book. And this follows Graham and Emmeline. Graham and she, they call her Emmy. And they meet at the beginning. They have like a really cute meet cute at the beginning. And <laughs> she ends up stealing his car to get away from an ex. And he has like a very expensive car because he is an NFL tight end. So basic, so because of that, and he knows she stole because she left him a note. Fast forward in time, they're both back in New York City. They both live in New York City and their lives are actually intertwined more than they knew. And he ends up finding her and kind of forces her to marry him because he needs to get his inheritance to help his brother and he needs to be married to get that so it's like a marriage of convenience but also there was like an immediate attraction and stuff when they met each other it just was it was like wrong place right 
right person, wrong time kind of thing. And he's trying to deal. Like, she has a lot going on in her life. She runs a bookstore. She's trying to take care of her family because of things that happened. And he had a really bad accident in football and is trying to decide, like, what to do with his future and everything. And I, th I thought it was well done. For what this book looks like, it was a very well-written storyline. So I did enjoy this. I gave this three and a half stars as well. So that were the well, five and a half books, but there's six books total that we talked about from this vlog. Let me know if you've read any of these. Let me know if not, which one you'd be most interested in reading. And I thank you if you've made it this far and I hope to see you all in the next video.